Hey everybody, welcome to worship on this Sabbath again. This 24th day of January, we lift up to you. We thank you joining us online. Uh, we are soon, you're going to get email blasts out and stuff like that. We're getting closer. We're working through a leadership team and we're soon to be going inside. But thanks for joining us online. I always appreciate your notes. And you know you can get a hold of us. You know you can email us. You know you get to our webpage. We're here for you, always. And I do appreciate the comments you're making so much. And when you want help, we're here for you. I want to lift up some announcements going on this week. Just know ministry is, is going in full swing. We have recovery this Tuesday. That's always a wonderful ministry. We have volleyball on Sunday night out at Coronas Gym. That's always good, too. Uh, just for kicks is in our building. We have a finance team meeting, and we just lift all that up. On Wednesday, our youth are in full swing. You're gonna, once, once we come back inside, they're going to be singing for us. That's a cool thing. They got some neat songs that they'll be singing, and that's coming up shortly. But our, our elementary kids are in full swing, and then our youth ministry is in full swing on Wednesday also. Going a little further out, we have our youth prayer partners. You can sign up for that. I know I've already have, and I encourage you to sign up to pray for one of our young people through the next this year of 2021. And then also, we have tubing coming up. On the 14th of February, what a way to spend Valentine's Day, tubing down a hill at Powder Ridge. But youth, you can sign up. A lot of you already have. The deadline's coming up because we have to pre-register, pre-pay for that. But you can sign up for that also. Just lots of things. We had a great movie night on Friday night this week. Know that. And eventually, I know it sounds crazy, but we're going to be starting Wednesday night adult study for Ash Wednesday in the season of Lent. So know that's coming up around the corner too. Lifting all that up to you, I want to call you into worship, and I want to do that from your homes, your electronic devices, in prayer. Here we go. Gracious Lord, we just come and ask you that we are open and willing to come into your house. <clears throat> we're worshiping on a Sunday, and we're worshiping with you because we love you from our devices, our home, and we just open up our hearts to come and worship you now. And we do that because we believe in you as the salvation of our lives, the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of our lives, the voice of God, the creation of our lives. And so we recognize you, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, God's only Son, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit with gratitude and thankfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue to worship, I'm going to ask us to continue to be in prayer. And I do lift up our prayer bookmarkers. We've had some more people go off. We've added a few. It's always a ministry. It's just, and if you want it, it's on, available on our website. But you can also email. You can email us and we will get it to you if you ever want to get this updated or ways to do that. Just an email away. But I continue to lift it up as a way to daily pray for people in asking for prayer and, and just a way of daily devotions for us. Let's continue to be in prayer. Here we go. Gracious Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, the great I am, the resurrection of our lives, the one that helps us celebrate Easter every single day, the one that helps us celebrate the birth of Christ, humanity, Emmanuel with God, giving up his deity willingly because he loved us all the way to the cross, all the way to the suffering of a human death, all the way to the statement, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Into a resurrected life, complete agape, unconditional forgiveness. That's the name of the Savior we pray in Jesus' name. That's the name we lift up our needs to you because you said, bring your petitions before me with love and faith in the name of Christ. So we lift up the names on our prayer bookmarker, the names on our hearts and ourselves included, and we pray for healing physically and emotionally in Jesus' name. We lift up our mission statement to you, Lord. Help us be Jesus with skin on. This week, this day, help us be the example. We're not perfect, but your love is perfect in us. Help us be the example of Christ in Jesus' name. Lord, we, we lift up also our leaders. We have transferred power this week. We did it peacefully, but we had to do it with military protection, Lord. And that's just not the way we like to do things in America. This isn't about who's better or worse with 
politics. That's, that's not what I'm interested in, Lord. I'm interested in us as a country and a nation coming together and chasing God's love. And doing that with our president to our local government, our national government, and all the way through, including us. So we lift our leaders to you, Lord, and we pray for them. And we pray for them in Jesus' name, from our president to our local government and some of our own. And we thank you for them in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, I also lift up and pray for the men and women in our military. They protected us this week. And they did it because they were asked to and they signed up to do it. Thank you for them. We have men and women currently we're praying for from our prayer book marker in places like Germany, the Carolinas, in the reserves, Lord. They have spouses. They have children. We pray for them. We thank you for, with, with gratitude for the willingness to serve, and we lift them up in Jesus' name. Lord, as a, as a church ministry, we pray for our firefighters each day. We pray for our medical responders each day, our law enforcement each day, and their spouses, their children, and we thank you for them. It's Sunday morning, Lord, and we had some snow run through the state of Minnesota, Lord, especially the, the southern half, and, and they're all out there protecting us through the night because it's what they do. The medical responders, the firefighters, the law enforcement, Lord, when we hear the siren, we pray, and we pray for them daily. We lift them up with gratitude and prayer. We lift up their spouses and their children, and we do it in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for recovery at Grace Church in this community and those in recovery that we reach out to every single time online. Thank you. We're praying for you. Hang in there and have the strength to be celebrating recovery over the slavery of addiction. We lift them up. And we thank you for what they teach us. And we pray for their freedom of recovery and celebration. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit. And Lord, as we come to you in prayer on this Sabbath, this worship, if we lift up the Lord's Prayer, because we know it, we believe it, and we say it. So with the words on the screen, from our homes and our devices, let's do it with meaning and depth. Pray this prayer with me and join me together. Here we go. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As we continue to worship, we are in the midst of a series on forgiveness. We're going to look at a passage as David puts it on the screen for you all. At home, we're going to look at a passage in the New Testament book of Colossians. Paul is again writing, imagine that, from a Roman prison. And he is in that prison and he gives us a wardrobe, a garments of clothing to wear if we want to pursue godly forgiveness. If we just want to, you know, get even and deal with it our way, then there's another closet of clothes to wear. But if we want to pursue godly forgiveness, Paul's going to give us this wardrobe that we faithfully are asked to put on. Starting in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, the words of Paul, the words of God's Holy Spirit breathing through him. Here we go. And as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved... Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Thanks be to God for the power of God's word. We are again <clears throat> looking at a series on forgiveness. And today 
with Paul's words from a Roman prison, we want to focus on the need for forgiveness, the need for forgiveness. And, and we're just going to look at that a little bit, and I'm going to ask that you join me in prayer. But before we do that, what I just read to you was a wardrobe of clothing that Paul says, if you really want to start working on forgiveness, and it takes a long time, so it's not just going to be a Sunday morning message. It takes a lot of prayer. Um, help from others. Maybe counseling. And a lot of faith. But if you want to do that, we must look at the wardrobe from God's level, not ours. Now, the reason we need to do that, uh, I want to humbly and also in a fun way create out the real reason why we need to look at God's wardrobe. I don't know how to dress myself. I don't put a lot of thought into my wardrobe. I got to be honest, it's not high on my list. Some of you, if you're at home listening to this, I know some of you on Wednesday night, you gather with me, you're like, oh my goodness, Pastor Bob's finally coming out of the 90s. I may stay in the 90s for a while, I kind of like it. But let me see if I can explain to you about this. So a couple of years ago, my wife finally convinced me begrudgingly that it was time for a new suit. Threads were gumming out. Uh, it, it wasn't pretty. It was kind of embarrassing, she said. It's time to get a new suit. So we went to the new suit store, and we got in there, and a nice gentleman met us right away. And, and I'm begrudgingly looking, and I asked the nice gentleman with his uh, tailor tape whatever measure thing and, and all of that in a new suit store that they have. And, and I look, and I see in the back corner a clearance rack. And I thought, whoa, a clearance rack and a suit store, I'm going. And we went to that clearance rack, and I found the price, you know, that show, The Price is Right. I found the price that was right. Had, you know, a suit, coat, and pants, and I pulled it out, and I said, what about this one? And Kelly's in the clearance rack, and, and the guy that was helping us kind of took a step back, and went, oh boy. And, and Kelly just looked at me right away and says, Bob, the reason that suit is so cheap is because corduroy went out in the 90s, Okay. We, we, we need to really look at our wardrobe. I need to look at my wardrobe at times. And we need to look at a way to do that and a faithfulness to want to put on our God's clothing. Before we do that, let's, let's pray. Lord, thank you for giving us a wardrobe. Because without it, we're left with the emptiness of vengeance and just wanting to get even. So as we look at the specific clothes that you would like us to wear, give us the strength to not wrap ourselves in low self-esteem and a lack of confidence saying we can't do it. Give us the strength to say we can. Because God, you said to Mary, by way of an angel Gabriel in Luke chapter one, you said with God all things are possible. Help us, Lord. Help us, Holy Spirit, know that as we look at the specifics of a wardrobe of forgiveness. Humbly, but with gratitude and expectation, may my words not be mine, Lord, but yours, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> There's an African folk tale about forgiveness, and it's called Chasing the Snake. Now, in Africa, unlike Minnesota, all of the snakes are poisonous snakes. Maybe not 100% of them, but 99% of them are. And if a snake in Africa bites you, there's a good chance that you have been bitten by a snake with poisonous venom that if you don't go get the anti-venom within um, a, a quick amount of time, we're talking less than an hour or maybe, it, it is going, the, the poisonous venom in your blood, body, in your blood system is going to kill you. Much like you get bit by a snake in the state of Florida, the bayous of Louisiana, or the desert southwest, it will kill you. So the folktale in Africa simply goes that if you get bit by a snake, it will do you no good to chase the snake that bit you and kill it. If you get bit by a snake, it'll do you no good to chase the snake that bit you and kill it. Because if you do that, that's the folktale, but if you do that, the poisonous venom in your body where the snake bit you will only run faster because the energy you are exerting from your body to chase the snake and it will cause the poisonous venom to run faster in your body and actually kill you faster. 
If you get bit by a snake in Africa and you actually chase the snake that bit you to kill it, you're only going to die faster. What you really need is an anti-venom. Paul, from a Roman prison, is giving us clothing and garments that are anti-venom to the pain of hate and the pain of wanting to get even. Chasing the snake that bit you will only kill you faster. So let's unfold that a little bit. Let's look at that. Garments of humility, garments of patience, garments of meekness in verse 12 that Paul puts out there. We're going to dive into that. But first, let's look a little closer at Paul, the man that is writing these verses as the Holy Spirit speaks to him and the Word of God gets canonized in the Testament, the New Testament. Remember, if you look at the book of Acts and you look at Paul's former life, he was Jewish and he was bent. He was, he was a vengeance-filled man wanting to rid the Jewish world of Christianity and any talk of a resurrected Lord. And he was so bent on it that he was intellectually smart enough, schooled, educated enough, where he got himself on the Sanhedrin court, which is equal to the Supreme Court of today. And he got him in such himself in such a position of power and intellect that he could hire men to kill or at least, the very least, arrest and jail people of the way, which was Christianity of his day. He would go from town to town and he would get lists of people of the way or believers and then he would turn the list to his thugs, almost like a mafia type of thing, and they would kill. In fact, in the book of Acts, there's actual um, documentation of a believer named Stephen being stoned to death and killed within a matter of minutes because he was preaching on a resurrected Lord and the ones who killed him laid their cloaks at the feet of Paul in celebration and honor of what they did. So the man who killed believers was saved by the grace of God. You want to talk about forgiveness. Was saved by the grace of God. And he knows what freedom is. And he knows what the garments. He didn't do that on his own. He did it because he understood the salvation of the Lord. I have talked with people who have done hard time in places like Stillwater. And they have a great life now. They've turned their life around and they have a wonderful life, but they remind me, they say, you know, I know I'm forgiven. And I work through that because there are always going to be people in my life that find out I've done hard time and they don't care. They've never met me. They don't know me, but they're automatically going to jump to a conclusion that I will never be any good to them. I ask him, how do they do that? They, they put on this type of clothing, they tell me. Paul says, as God's chosen ones. <laughs> that should tell us enough right there. And then the word holy and beloved, that means he's never going to stop loving us. We're holy to God no matter what we've done. You want to talk about chase, not chasing the snake, about forgiving. Clothe yourselves. And this is not garments that you and I pull at our level. If that's the case, we're never going to make it. Clothe yourselves with compassion, that's that first piece of clothing, compassion, that first piece, piece of clothing. That means that I'm so compassionately filled, humility and compassion, I'm going to add together there, and kindness, com humility especially. I'm so humbled. I'm so humbled because of God's compassion and kindness for me. I'm so humbled that I don't need to be the center of attention. You know how that works. I, I'm not perfect at it, but you know how, what I'm talking about. Oh, I've got a story better than that. And that person has to have that story all the time. That person has to be the center of attention all of the time. Paul learned through salvation and humility. <clears throat> By way of God's compassion and kindness, Paul knew I don't have to be the center of attention. And then Paul says, put on another piece of garment, meekness. This helps us not chase the snake. Meekness means I have a godly confidence. 
It's not that I have weak self-esteem. It's not that I'm weak because I don't go after everybody that hurts me. I pick and choose my battles wisely, pick and choose them. And, and, and meekness means that I have a godly confidence. I don't need to chase a snake just to prove that I'm a winner. Come on, folks. Paul was looked at even to this day by some people, even today as they learn his real story of a no-good killer. But he had godly confidence as he knew in the Lord's eyes he was number one. And if that's the case, you can also then, working towards forgiveness, put on the strength of patience. That's godly strength. Not only humility, not being the center of attention, meekness, godly confidence, but godly strength means patience. You know what I'm talking about. We get in those situations where somebody else has just gone off the deep end and they are making a snake of themselves. And we just want to bite. We just want to bite. We just want to go after them. We just want them to understand pain. But we're... We're, we're smarter and more mature than that. And we end up saying, God, I need your strength because going after this person is going to do anybody no good, especially me. We want to forgive. We start putting on this clothing and we do it with God's help. Humility, godly confidence, meekness, godly strength. Patience, godly strength, not making ourselves the center of attention. And once we get to that point, and Paul understands that personally, once we get to that point, we can, we can go to God and we can say this other verse with confidence, bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, it's going to happen. It happens to me. I do it to others when I shouldn't. If anyone has a, a, a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Before we started this message, we do it every single Sabbath. We say the Lord's Prayer. And one of the things we say, and it, I think it's very important that we say it in this order. That's the way Jesus taught us for a reason. Forgive us of our trespass. Forgive us our trespass. Forgive us our sins. So in other words, we acknowledge the clothing that God gives us when we seek God's forgiveness of our sins, and then we get the ability for the next phrase, as we forgive those who sinned against us. If we want to chase the snake, we can. It's pretty simple. We, you know, it, it doesn't take much to chase a snake. But as we start chasing that snake, the venom in our body will build up with such poison that we will become dead to any kind of real love or purpose in life. We'll get the snake. We'll probably even get rid of the snake. But the venom will kill us also. Instead, Paul says, clothe yourself to a level of forgiveness. Finally, He reminds us what to wrap the whole closet wardrobe in. Above all, close yourselves with love. Now that's a simple word, love. Um, there's actually three uh, Koine Greek New Testament language that love is written in. One is an heiress love, which is a physical love like a husband and a wife have towards each other, or even a boyfriend and girlfriend. And then there's Adelphos, the city of Philadelphia, Adelphos, uh, a brotherly, sisterly love, a genuine earthly level of love, brotherly, sisterly. And then there's the love that this Greek definition comes from in this particular word of love, agape love, unconditional love. It never ends. If we want to choose the garments of humility, of meekness and patience, of of not making myself the center of attention, of godly confidence and godly strength, then we got to pursue unconditional love. Because that love binds us in perfect harmony with God. I'm going to invite Del Lieberts up in just a bit, and he's going to sing a song to us. You can come on up, Del. He's going to sing a song to us called Forgiveness by Matthew West. Kind of a theme for this series. You're going to hear that song a little bit, but it's really got some great words to it. 
as he gets ready to sing, I want to share a story. Um, somebody told me about, I don't know, a number of years ago that we were talking and this person had become what I call born again. He had found that agape love and he found it at such a level that he was, he was no longer chasing the snakes in his life. He was letting them go. And he looked at me one time as we were smiling together and talking out on the lake. And he said, you know, I used to, I used to go to church on Christmas Eve and Easter so I could please my mom and get that done with. He says, now, Pastor Bob, I, I go every Sunday because I want, a good, I want agape love. And I know what that means. Forgiveness by Matthew West. Take some time and go to the altar in your home, folks. Wherever you are on your devices, spend some time at the altar with God as we close this message. It's the hardest thing to give away Last thing on your mind today It always goes to those that don't deserve It's the opposite of how you feel When the pain they cause is just too real It takes everything you have just to say the word Forgiveness, forgiveness Flies in the face of all your pride It moves away the mad inside It's always anger's own worst enemy Even when the jury and the judge Say you got a right to hold a grudge It's the whisper in your ear saying set it free Forgiveness, forgiveness Forgiveness, forgiveness Show me how to love the unlovable Show me how to reach the unreachable Help me now to do the impossible Forgiveness, forgiveness Help me now to do the impossible Forgiveness, it'll clear the bitterness away. It can even set a prisoner free. There is no end to what its power can do. So let it go and be amazed by what you see through the eyes of grace. The prisoner that it really frees is. Forgiveness, forgiveness, oh forgiveness, forgiveness. Show me how to love the unlovable, show me how to reach the unreachable, help me now to do the impossible. Forgiveness, I want to finally set it free. Show me how to see what your mercy sees. Help me now to give what you gave to me. Forgiveness, oh forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. Amen and thank you, Dell. Let's just spend some time close in prayer here. From our devices, wherever we are, Lord, at home or wherever. Help us understand, yeah, it's the hardest thing to do. But you can show us how to love the impossible. Give us the strength to put on the wardrobe of humility, of meekness and patience so we can bring our burdens to each other and learn with agape love 
the salvation of Jesus Christ, a relationship with our Lord and Savior, we can learn to forgive each other. Because a lifetime chasing a snake only creates poisonous death. An emptiness that leads nowhere. And Lord, we're tired of chasing the snake. Help us understand Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, amen.